Okay, five and oh. In this session, we're looking at how to build luck in your chess game. There's a lot of elements that go on in the game of chess, but luck seems to be one that stands out quite big in my games. And it's not just, you know, saying, oh, I got lucky because I, you know, I didn't do anything right. It's probably more so that the opponent didn't do something right. And it's just developing that opportunity to take advantage of that lucky type of situation that has been created. I'm going to attack this pawn here. And just double the pawns here. The knight is in, it's attacking this pawn, might as well bring the bishop in and support it. So keeping things simple, straightforward. But there's always an element of luck in there somewhere because it all depends on what the opponent does and what they're kind of giving you inadvertently. Not on purpose, but they may give you something that you might be able to take advantage of. So the attack in the head of the snake, I think we should just take it. He does have now center management of this um, board for now. So I'm going to bring this bishop out and we've got options of castling kingside or queenside. This doesn't have much of a castle here and the queen can come and put a check on. So I think we'll just castle on the kingside. We'll have a little touch here attacking the queen. I don't think they're going to exchange, but let's see anyway. Just making its inroad into putting checks on the king, which would be a bit disturbing. So we're going to capture with the knight. We're trying to see if we can get some sort of situation here. It's also this attacking this pawn does drop. Bishop's looking to get diagonal towards here. Doesn't have anything at the minute, but maybe the rook comes here and starts leaning on this area. Could bring this rook here and then take the pawn because this pawn won't be able to take. I think we'll go with this one first and just leave this one for now. It's got no protection and they've not gone for it. So we will take the pawn. This pawn can't take because the rook has got the x-ray through to the king. So is that the element of luck that we're talking about? Could um, attack the rook. Just comes down though. And then the bishop's just hanging around. So we might as well hit the bishop. Yes. They don't have to do. They'll probably just bring this pawn down here because they're taking a long pause now. Oh, they're not doing any of that. So we can hit the um, knight. If the pawn takes, we get a check on the king from the rook. Doesn't have to take. The knight can move. Where is it going to? It's not going to come here, is it? Because it'll get taken. So we get the check on the king. Which means we can get the rook off the board with the bishop. Elements of luck, like we were talking about, it's um, more times out of 10 what the opponent actually gives to you, but it's being able to seize those opportunities as best possible. It looks like they may have left the game. So that was fairly quick and swift, but it's kind of highlighting that element of luck, you know, because the opponent didn't have to make the movements that they made. But we took advantage of oh, well, basically better type position, putting pressure towards the King Gary and taking advantage of wheat squares, wheat pieces, etc. Which is the answer to chess. Okay, just continuing the how to develop the look, how to take advantage of any look that happens in the game. 
and try and reverse the look that the opponent gets if they've got an advantage because we may give them a bit of luck and the bishop is supporting the knight so he's um, coming in all gung-ho so let's just see what we want to do with this knight it's not coming in here oh no he's going for one of them specials so we're gonna have to put a bit of work in queen's coming here probably putting a check on oh, all the bishop damn if we hit the bishop with the pawn bishop takes and he's still going to be on us we just move the king out of the way oh what have we put ourselves in if we come here then the queen's coming here anything else if we go there like that bishop can still take because he's got the support of the pawn and he's still going to have the check on the king but then the bishop can come and attack okay let's hit this here we'll be down a pawn and bring the bishop here but then the queen comes and puts a check on oh dear and then the queen can come here so have they given us luck or have we given them luck and um given them the advantages so that's the strength getting the queen here and the white square bishop um getting this diagonal but it looks like we have some sort of defensible types of positions he does have a bit of a monster knight pawn here, but I suppose the knight can take to be on the queen. So they have gone for that, so we're going to hit the bishop. Then the queen's probably come here, like we said, so we can bring the queen here to face it off. So momentarily up two at the moment. I thought I was going to be down a pawn, but we're up two because they've sacrificed their piece. So we're just waiting queen coming here queen coming here don't think the queen's taking there's space for the knight to come here at some point as well or do they just take to get the quick king even more out and then the queen comes here putting a check on nothing in front of the oh it's brought it that way so we can bring the pawn here smaller piece attacking the higher piece and then it's it going, where's it going? Okay, it's not coming here because the pawn will take it. it. Does have a two on one on this pawn. Yeah, it's getting the king out into the open so the queen can keep putting checks on. So are we safe coming here again? Trying to attack the queen. So queen's coming here. No, sorry, there, sorry. Queen's coming there, so we're not going to get that. Oh, that's going to hurt, is it? One piece can't do it by itself. That's the key thing to note. Attack the queen. So currently plus one. But I'm not looking at the material. I'm trying to gain a better position. I'd rather be three, point, three points down. And have a really good position. So we can bring the king here to its um, starting point. In a sense. Probably coming down here for the pawn, so maybe best coming here, but it does block the bishop. Yeah, but I don't think we want it flying around here, do we? So we're going to block the bishop. Sorry, bishop. Just trying to guard this square. Now he wants to get his pieces out. Probably getting the knight out. I don't think they're going to go castle. Our knight's looking, chomping at the bit to attack the queen. Give them something to think about. So the offering of luck in terms of the sacrifice that they did, did it improve their position? It makes it messy for us, but if we can weather the storm, um, we should be fairly okay because we're up kind of materially. We've got more minor pieces because they've done the sacrifice. So that's it's just go and attack the queen, give them something to think about. Maybe try and get the rook here. I don't know if it's going to be a long haul thing of trying to get the king across here. All right, anything else? Let's have a look. No exchange of the queen. Queen could come here. Yeah, because if we move the rook, it's going to be coming down. But I suppose we can just take it. Anything else? Anything else? That square bishop, get it out. Knight, king, king, there. Shall we, whew, are we going to try and go on Queen's, there's no point though, is it? Because it's going to be by itself. 
queen will come here then and then it's going to be in front of the king right don't overthink it but we do have plenty of time really just wanting to try and get the queen but it doesn't look like they're going to exchange I don't mind doubling my pawns in this situation so I'm going to attack the queen again does it come back and attack the noise on a dark square bishops on a dark square but uh, kings got protection with the pawn I don't think they're going to exchange I think they're not happy with what they've got at the minute they want to get more pieces out before they think of doing the queen exchange I think it's either going to go back, back, or it's not coming down here. I've got this space, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Got this space to come back up again and attack. So they could go for a draw, or he's hitting our knight, which is a damn shame, isn't it? Yeah, so if we went over and put a check on, he just takes the knight with a check here. All right, so we could bring the bishop here, protecting the knight, getting it activated. I think that's what we'll do and then we'll swing across and attack the queen if it's still there and it's just going to dance around it looks like my poor king is in the middle of the ball but it's saying go and fight the good fight there's no point in sticking me in a corner I'm going to get hit so whoa, we may as well stay there for a minute bishop or the knight which one I think the knight coming out somehow somewhere this pawn's got no protection so maybe the rook gives us something to think about i don't want to be caught up in elements that are really gonna oh he's got my rook got my rook if i take but the bishop's protecting so let's take and let's hit the queen because the bishop's protecting the rook if he's not seen that So again, a bit lucky there. The opponent looked like obviously they're struggling to find moves to make, which is good. That's good for us. So we're just going to attack the queen again. Obviously he's coming out of the way, don't want to trade. So we've got a, quite a few pieces facing their king, but I don't know if there's, well, it looks like they've left the game. So yeah, it looks like there's that crazy type of opening it can upset your rhythm if you're not looking at what the opponent is potentially able to do. What can you do against what the opponent can do, really? It's like looking at those blind spots and that helps to develop your game, which then creates a lot of luck in the games. I have not, I've not done anything special in there. The opponent kind of did that to themselves by doing those crazy sacrifices. But... They look good and they feel strong when it's actually happening to you. And if you've not got your wits about you, they can actually just win the game for the opponents because you're unbalanced in your response. Okay, just continuing the how to be lucky in chess or how to build your luck in chess and either way it's one of those where sometimes well we can take this pawn that's a bit special but are we being set up i'm going to take it's one of those kind of sayings that really when you say oh you got lucky it kind of almost sounds like it's cheapening any training that you might have done you know to actually build up towards that and I think really sometimes you can say lucky when you've not done that amount of training and say you've beaten somebody who you weren't expected to beat but you've not done a lot of training maybe you're a beginner or you've just started playing and somehow you gained an advantage then you can say lucky 
But if you've been putting in the work and you've been putting in the effort and the time and you've been focusing, you've been reading books, you've been doing what you need to do to train, you know, and um, maybe taking tutorials or whatever it is, however it is that you're training. And is this queen getting this pawn while I'm jibber jabbering? We're already up a pawn. We could hit, but we could just defend, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, if you've been putting in the work and effort, is it really luck at the end of the day if you're gaining advantages in the game? It's a key thing, you know, because when you say, oh, you got lucky, it really does sound like it's cheapening your development and the way that you're working. This is not one of those situations where I'm coming here because like we said, it's got this at the minute, but it is kind of preventing them, I suppose, pushing down, but the knight is defending here at the moment. So I'd, maybe I, I don't want to do that. But also I don't want my queen supporting the pawn forever and a day. Let's go here and then we can uh, potentially sit it here in front of the uh, queen. Yeah, so training, if you're training and you're working hard and you're focusing, you're developing and you're getting better and better as you're um, going through. It's a different kind of look. Yeah, so this is why I'm comfortable. We can hit this queen now, can't we? It's a different kind of look. It's the look in the sense of, yes, you put all the work in and it's lucky that the opponent actually made a particular move or gave you a particular type of position on the board which allowed you to gain advantage because every every move that the opponent makes you don't know what they're going to do so it's lucky that they made a bad move or lucky that um, they didn't see a checkmate you know like a checkmate in one or whatever so that's where the luck comes in so i don't look at it and saying lucky as being cheapening my game or my development I look at it more as a case of yes well it's lucky that the opponent didn't see that because I left that open why is my queen coming here looking to maybe come across is it a good position I think I'm looking to double up on this pawn and I to give them something to think about let's go here and then maybe get this rook here and try and double up it's also stopping the king from castling if it's thinking of castling. We may go for a simple trade. I think we'll just bring the rook here. Yep, so it's it's no longer a dirty word, is lucky, you know, and um, being lucky in chess because we are, yeah, he's defending, which is okay. I think we'll continue with doing this because we're giving them something to think about. Then we could potentially, well, they're seeing all this. So they're, they're awake. They're awake. Our, it looks like our queen can be quite devastating though. So I think we're going to come here, start attacking the pawns. And I'm looking now when I'm doing my moves and doing my narration, I'm thinking, well, am I making them lucky now by actually making these moves? You know, have I missed something? Because we did stop them from castling there. And we've just gonna jump to attack a pawn, greedy munching a pawn. This pawn is protected, so I'm fairly happy with that. We could take this pawn now because this rook was defending, so now we are owning the file. So I'm fairly happy with that. Everything was guarded, and now we're owning the file. Key thing for the rooks, especially coming towards the end game. Now they're going mad crazy. We could attack the pawn here. I don't want to go here because he owns the file then. So just bring the rook down. Is there rook something to do to go and protect? And at this point now, I think we just do slow potatoes. I was thinking of this. It drops, we can push. Yeah, let's do this. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna lose anything with that. He does have this little bit of situation going here. So we can slow down now, we've got 31 minutes left, and plus three at the moment. I think it's taking time now to look at the end game and slow grind it out. 
and hopefully keep maintaining the look that we've just um, created here in this game. So I'm very mindful that in these exercises that I'm doing, looks like they may have left the game, their signal's going. Um, in these exercises that we've just done, these three last games where we're talking about luck, um, I've got lucky in these games because of what the opponent has offered to me. I'm not doing anything magical, there's nothing special. It's all simple, straightforward chess that you can understand. And the principles and concepts are really straightforward. Positions, checks, captures, threat, support, blocking, and then back to position. Looking at those types of things and they've resigned. 